<clears throat> hey, it's been a while. Well, all right, it hasn't been that long. You know, it's not like I took an official break from YouTube or anything like that. I put up a few videos last year. I put up a whole bunch of shorts around Christmas in yet another well-intentioned public project I abandoned halfway through. But uh, let's look at the numbers from last year. All right, so in 2021, not counting shorts or live streams, I put up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I think seven videos. Again, there were live streams and shorts in there, but yikes. Okay, versus in 2020, I put up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven videos that is exactly the same. So for the past two years, I've put out seven videos. Now in 2019, I did Vlogmas. I didn't finish Vlogmas. <laughs> But it looks like I did 17 Vlogmas videos, so I put up 31 videos in 2019 versus 7 each in 2020 and 2021. Uh, okay, well let's see about 2018. 50, a nice round 50 in 2018. Amazing. Now I'm not gonna go all the way back to 2010 when this channel was started or some of the other channels that I've done, uh, but yeah, 50, 30, roughly how many videos I used to be putting out per year, and then last year and this year, seven. Seven per year. Though this might be interesting, can I maybe look at views that I got each year? So in 2021, we got a total of 752,855 views. In 2020, a million one hundred eighty-three thousand six hundred thirty-four. Two thousand eighteen, one million seven hundred forty-nine thousand. Oh, I think that was the year I had a couple of really good videos that did really well. Wow, I got a million less views in 2021 than in 2018. That doesn't feel great, but also I guess shouldn't be surprising because I, you know, didn't put out too many videos. And it's not all about the views or the money or anything like that, but sometimes you've got to look at the hard numbers to realize, you know, what's actually happening uh, and sort of jolt you back to reality or help you see, you know, what you do or do not want to be doing in the world. Sometimes that data can really help you see or inform how you want to proceed. So while I haven't been gone, I have been posting less and not just on YouTube. I've been posting less everywhere online. And before I return with some random video on some trans topic, I thought I'd actually talk to you about what I've been up to and why I sort of took a step back from YouTube for the last couple of years, I guess, at this point. And part of it is because I have been really busy. So right before the pandemic, I started a new job with Ride Home Media, and since summer of 2020, I have been the writer, host, editor, co-producer of a daily podcast. It's Wednesday, March 23rd, 2022. I'm Jackson Bird. How genetically modified lettuce grown in space could protect astronauts' bones on long voyages. Plus, meet Doug, the false potato stripped of Guinness World Record glory in the 11th hour. How the Royal Mint in the UK is going to start recovering gold from the nation's electronic waste, and a two-carat diamond made out of ranch dressing. Here is some cool stuff for your ride home. We do post those on YouTube, by the way, in case you're like opposed to podcasts unless they're on YouTube. It's up everywhere too, though. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, anywhere you get your podcasts. 15 minutes every weekday sharing interesting stuff from the news, from science, history, weird internet culture, basically whatever I find fascinating that day. But other than the podcast, I've been doing a lot of speaking engagements with companies, at schools, at conferences, even on the news. I'd forgotten about that one. All virtually, of course, except I did host the Trans Advocacy Awards, and that was in person just before cases bounced back up here in the city, and that was awesome. And while cases were low, I also got to visit family. My mom and I even drove most of the way across the country together. My buddies and I went camping. I was also working as a speaker coach and did a lot of freelance video editing and that sort of thing. Yeah, 
I've been doing a lot, but having fun too. <laughs> it is a paperback. It was Mary Todd. Liquid death. <laughs> Space Needle was built back in 1962. Oh, wow. oh, But another reason that I've been posting less is that I've spent a lot of time over the past couple of years thinking about the impact of social media and what I do or don't get out of it, and what all of us do or don't get out of it. You know, I think it's pretty apparent by now how absolutely damaging social media can be. And even though most of us here, like watching LGBT YouTube videos, know how much of a positive force for good social media can be, how it can help people figure themselves out and, and feel less alone, I still have days where I fantasize about like the social media button being completely turned off and returning to a pre-social media, I mean, heck, even a pre-internet world. I have this one fantasy where I live on a farm and instead of social media, once a week I like walk half a mile down my driveway to my mailbox to get the newspaper and some letters. Yeah, that's like a super exaggerated, unrealistic kind of dream that probably wouldn't actually be so nice. But you know, when I go a few days without opening Twitter or Instagram or whatever, I mean, there is for sure a bit of FOMO, but it's almost worth it for how much more clear-headed and focused and energized I feel and creative. Like my thoughts and ideas are my own and not some fuzzy Xerox copies of everyone else's opinions that I read online that day. So it's probably no coincidence that I quit my one remaining social media job last year and that I've started doing once a month tech sabbaths where I turn off all of my devices, phone, internet, TV, everything for 24 hours. I'll make a video about my experience with that at some point. But even that last sentence, that's it, you know, I'm taking all these steps away from social media, but I'm gonna make a video that I post online telling you what that experience has been like. And here I am in a video telling you about that intention to make another video. You know, I think I'm in a state right now of figuring out the healthiest balance for me. How can I continue to share my thoughts and have a creative outlet and experience those positive sides of social media without getting bogged down by or contributing to the negative aspects? There's a Vlogbrothers video from several years ago at this point where John Green is talking about the Tetris World Championships. In it, he says, I know it's fashionable these days to say that the internet is a festering cesspool of toxicity, and you know, it is. But the internet is also many other things, including one of the primary drivers of humanity's improved performance at a 29-year-old video game. Really, there is no THE internet, especially in the era of personalized feeds. There is only, for each of us, OUR internet. I don't labor under the delusion that I can make THE internet better, but I do want to make MY internet better. So I too am working on how I can make MY internet better using the internet for the utility and communication mechanism it is, as well as a place to learn, to get inspired, to share, and to try not to get bogged down by doom scrolling or a pressure to always know everything that's going on. And YouTube is a pretty good place for that, at least for the videos I like to watch and the ones I like to create, you know, they take a lot longer to produce, days or even weeks or months, as opposed to the more immediate top of mind thoughts that make up the bulk of other platforms. It is, in some ways, if you want it to be, a slower platform. And I like that. Now, I don't know yet exactly what my ideal relationship to social media will be, but I do know that I've missed making videos more regularly. 
So I'm intending to do more of that. Now, I'm not gonna promise consistency because I know myself, but I did make one recent upgrade that is making me pretty stoked to keep creating videos. This is my usual camera. I have had this camera and used it for almost every single video on this channel and other channels since 2011. This camera could be in fifth grade. So I just bought this new camera, um, hopefully for beta, and I'm gonna test drive it at South by Southwest this weekend. And I mean, good cameras do last a long time. Uh, my dad actually recently got into buying and fixing up and reselling old cameras, so I know how long that they can last and still be great. Uh, he actually gave me this old Nikon Photomic FTN from 1971, and the photos that I've taken and developed on it have turned out so good even though I barely know what I'm doing, like it is mostly the camera making the photos look good. But video is a little bit different. Like this old camera is missing a lot of the features that are just standard now. You know, ones that have been designed particularly with video creators in mind, not as like second thoughts for cameras that are more primarily made for photographers, which was the case when I got this one. And also, I've put this camera through a lot over the years. Yes, there are bumps and scratches on it, but also like probably batter and all kinds of weird waffle things. I mean, and this camera has literally traveled to multiple countries with me. So it has done its duty. So finally, at long last, I got this. lens in here as well. Oh yeah. Change the battery pack. I guess I won't test this out quite yet, but oh god, this is so light. I can't believe how light this is compared to my last one. Super stoked. Now I will say that like this video especially probably doesn't look too much better than my usual videos yet because I am still figuring it out and getting it all set up. You know, what lens to use, how to plug in the mics and just the whole overall workflow I'm still working on. And like, I'm no film expert, despite how many tutorials I've watched for the last 15 years and despite four semesters at a literal film school, I'm still pretty bad with directing my own like home video blogging setup. And I don't know if that's a thing I will ever be skilled at. I am way more of an editor. But still, it feels good to get a little upgrade. And uh, thank you to folks on Patreon who have helped me save up for new gear for this channel and my other work over the years. You all are the absolute best. Obviously, a new camera isn't what makes a channel. The future of this channel and my future in terms of what I create, what I do for work, where I live, how I want to engage with the internet, these are all huge questions that I've been grappling with and trying to find that balance in. You know, making videos during the pandemic has been tough. Mentally, a little, I think, but also just not having a great living situation for making videos, what with my roommate working from home now and our street and building being very noisy. A big part of it has also been how busy I've been. You know, like, the daily podcast grind is no joke. And in 2020, when I got hired to do the daily podcast, I hadn't quit any of my other jobs that I was doing. So I was working, like, 14 hour days every weekday and trying to catch up on my own projects on the weekend. And then in 2021, I quit one job, basically replaced it immediately with other stuff, but also, you know, the country opened up a little and I started traveling again and having things on my calendar again and forgetting that I had never done all of that while also hosting a daily podcast since I started that right at the beginning of the pandemic. And wow, turns out juggling all of that is really tough. So balance. I am trying to find balance. Even just over the last couple of weeks, I've been reminded how much rest can help. I mean, I knew it was good physically and emotionally, but I forgot that it's good creatively too. Like I arranged my schedule to have less to do for a bit at the start of the year, and within a couple of days, the floodgates just opened with all kinds of creative ideas. 
But then of course I get into the trap where I then want to immediately execute every idea when I barely have time to do even one of them, let alone all of them, and so then I don't leave myself time to rest anymore because I'm just working on these ideas and then stressing about deadlines either I made up for myself or committed to with an external party and I get burnt out all over again. And that's how we got this video. <laughs> Several weeks in the making because I tried to do it at the same time as a bunch of other stuff. So I don't know. Yeah, I want to create more on this channel and in general, you know, write more books and stories. I'm not sure how yet, time-wise, but I also kind of want to share more of that, like share more of what it's like to be a professional creative, which I guess you could say I am <laughs> at this point. And also, yeah, share more about being a 30-something trans guy, <laughs> like just living and existing and aging as a trans person. And you know, between the pandemic keeping us at home and finally having a main job that is not about being trans, I feel like I've kind of hit this new era of my life of just not thinking about my own transness as much as I used to. I mean, I do definitely still, but like it's, it's more like on the back burner, just sort of this uh, like low frequency radio at the back of my mind. And that's made me so much more interested in other trans people's stories, especially those who came before us. And I would love to continue sharing more trans history like I did in the fall. Although <sighs> doing even a halfway decent research job takes a ton of time. I love it, just like everything else I don't have enough time for, but yeah, it's very time consuming. I will say, despite how much of an existential crisis this video has become, I'm not really announcing like any big changes to the channel. I still wanna keep making videos mostly on trans or trans adjacent topics, sometimes some waffle videos and sometimes more random topics. But before I posted a standalone video topic for the first time in a few months, I thought I'd just check in with all of you, let you know where I'm at, a little of what I've been up to. You know, especially on YouTube compared to other places like Twitter and Instagram, I feel like I don't really tell you much about what I'm doing beyond YouTube. It's like I'm just this trans talking head who doesn't do anything else. And without shaking things up too much, I think I'd like to break out of that bubble just a little. Share more about other stuff that I work on or other hobbies in my life. Let you in a little bit more. Or honestly, just try to be more present here on YouTube. And I'm curious, what is your relationship like with social media? Is it all positive? You know, is it your happy place? Or is it something you're working on and also trying to find that balance in? I'd really love to hear other people's thoughts on this. Also, I know since I haven't posted a video in a while, the algorithm isn't going to promote this video too much, and since it's not on like a click-worthy trans topic, there's gonna be a lot of people who skip this one. So if you were watching this video, if you've made it this far into this video, I just want to express my utmost thanks to you. You are the type of person I think about when I make the kinds of videos that I really want to make. Because you get it. We're on the same wavelength. I appreciate that you're here, and I'm glad to be back. So a big thank you to you, the end of video finishers especially, and I'll see you next time.